This is the second part of the second lecture of Module 8 in the Apology of General Science book. We're going to continue now by looking at both theories of uniformitarianism and catastrophism and asking the question, which is better? Really, the question should be, which of these theories fits the data better? Now, something I want you to notice that I think is very honorable and respectable is that Dr. Weil clearly states on page 203 that he thinks catastrophism is a superior view with which to analyze the data. This is important because everyone has a bias one way or the other. Most authors in most books don't bother to state their bias. But Dr. Weil makes it clear right up front that he thinks catastrophism is superior. Even so, he presents the problems with uniformitarianism and the problems with catastrophism and doesn't just present one side of the story. So let's begin by looking at the first problem with uniformitarianism. We're going to list six here. The first problem with uniformitarianism is that there are just too many fossils in the fossil record. Remember, Fossilization is a rare event. Usually something, must, something special must occur in order for a dead organism to fossilize. Catastrophes such as a volcanic eruption and floods, and especially a worldwide flood, would provide lots of these special events. Now, I had to question this for a little bit because I thought, wait, if, there, if the uniformitarianist believes that there's been millions and millions of years, and I assumed that most uniformitarianists believed in a worldwide flood. Well, the combination of those two would allow for all these different fossils that we have in the fossil record. So I went out and did some research on Internet, and I was surprised to find that a lot of scientists today do not believe in the worldwide flood. They think that that was just a myth. So if you take that out, that event, out of history, then truly there are way too many fossils in the fossil record because you've got to have those special events, those catastrophes, in order to cause this fossilization because it doesn't happen normally. So even though there's, they believe in millions of years, if you don't have that worldwide flood, it's pretty hard to explain how there could be so many fossils in the fossil record. The second problem we're going to look at are fossils like the Tyrannosaurus rex bone that was recently found that contains soft tissue. And that's very hard to understand in the uniformitarian framework. Dr. Weil in the book says, it's hard to believe that after 65 billion years, the petrifaction process has not been completed. But it's even harder to understand how soft tissue could have survived for such a long time without decaying away. You see, in the uniformitarianist geological column, the Tyrannosaurus rex became extinct at least 65 million years ago. But now we have found this bone that contains soft tissue that it's really hard to understand how after 65 million years that soft tissue wouldn't have decayed away and that bone wouldn't have wouldn't have completed petrifaction. So this is just showing us that this idea of millions and millions of years is very questionable when you have fossils like this. The third problem that uniformitarianists have explaining are these fossil graveyards, especially those with fossils from many different climates. Those are hard to understand in the uniformitarian view. For example, the Cumberland Bone Cave. You have to ask the question, how did so many fossils from so many different climates come to rest in one cave, especially if you don't believe in a worldwide flood? The worldwide flood explains this quite easily, that all these different animals were um, killed and their bones came to rest in one common place. But without that worldwide flood, these fossil graveyards are very difficult for
for the uniformitarianist to explain. A fourth problem with uniformitarianism is that of the index fossils, because these are called into question by the many creatures that we once thought were extinct, but now know are not. Remember the Wilhelmina pine tree that was thought extinct but discovered alive in Australia in 1994. The coelacanth fish that was thought extinct and was used as an index fossil but then discovered alive in Africa in 1939. You just have to wonder how many other index fossils are thought to be extinct but someday will be found alive. And remember these index fossils are vital in the construction of that geological column. Those index fossils are what dated that rock and what allowed the uniformitarianists to bring all the layers from all the different regions of the world and mesh them together into one. So these index fossils are very important in creating that geological column, which is the foundation for the theory of evolution.